When Pluto was first discovered, it was naturally given the status of the ninth planet. Pluto is now known to be the largest of many objects in the Kuiper Belt. Ceres, which was discovered before Pluto, is the largest body in the asteroid belt. Although Ceres is smaller than Pluto, some astronomers thought that they should have the same status. The definition of a planet is that it is a body that orbits the Sun, and it is also spheroid in shape. Both Pluto and Ceres meet these two criteria. Pluto, which is smaller than Earth's moon, has a heart-shaped glacier that's the size of Texas and Oklahoma. This fascinating world has blue skies, spinning moons, and mountains as high as the Rocky Mountains. Pluto was discovered on February 18, 1930, at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, by astronomers Clyde W. Tombaugh, with contributions from William H. Pickering. This period in astronomy was one of intense planet hunting, and Pickering was a prolific planet predictor. Tombaugh's task was to systematically image the night sky in pairs of photographs, taken two weeks apart, then examine each pair and determine whether any objects had shifted position. Using a machine called a blink comparator, he rapidly shifted back and forth between views of each of the plates to create the illusion of movement of any objects that had changed position or appearance between photographs. On February 18, 1930, after nearly a year of searching, Tombaugh discovered a possible moving object on photographic plates taken on January 23rd and January 29th of that year. The discovery made headlines across the globe. The Lowell Observatory, which had the right to name the new object, received over 1,000 suggestions from all over the world. The name Pluto was proposed by Venetia Burney, an 11-year-old schoolgirl in Oxford, England. Venetia was interested in classical mythology as well as astronomy and considered the name for the god of the underworld appropriate for such a presumably dark and cold world. Pluto's moons are named for other mythological figures associated with the underworld. Charon is named for the River Styx boatmen who ferry souls in the underworld. Nyx is named for the mother of Charon, who is also the goddess of darkness and night. Hydra is named for the nine-headed serpent that guards the underworld. Kerberos is named after the three-headed dog of Greek mythology, and Styx is named for the mythological river that separates the world of the living from the realm of the dead. In August 2006, the International Astronomical Union downgraded the status of Pluto to that of a dwarf planet. This means that from now on, only the rocky worlds of the inner solar system and the gas giants of the outer system will be designated as planets. The inner solar system is the region of space that is smaller than the radius of Jupiter's orbit around the Sun. It contains the asteroid belt as well as the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The gas giants, of course, are Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. So now we have eight planets instead of the nine we used to have. Confirmation of the first Kuiper Belt object invigorated the existing debate. And in 2000, the Hayden Planetarium in New York became a focus for controversy when it unveiled an exhibit featuring only eight planets. The planetarium's director, Neil deGrasse Tyson, would later become a vocal figure in public discussions of Pluto's status. The main event of the 2006 General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union, the proposal that would come to demote Pluto, was a defining moment for the rest of the solar system as well. Fiercely debated by the members of the Union, the resolution that was passed officially defined the term planet. What was once a loose word used to describe a large object within the solar system was now specific. Planets are celestial objects, large enough to be made rounded by their gravitational orbit around the Sun and to have shooed away neighboring planetary objects and debris. Pluto is now classified as a dwarf planet because while it is large enough to have become spherical, it is not big enough to exert its orbital dominance and clear the neighborhood surrounding its orbit. Before the resolution in 2006, the term planet had no working definition and was based on classification from before some of the major modern discoveries within the universe that were made possible by advances in technology. To many citizens of Earth, the demotion of Pluto felt like a break from tradition. Since Pluto is so far from Earth, 
Little was known about the dwarf planet's size or surface conditions until 2015, when NASA's New Horizons space probe made a close flyby of Pluto. New Horizons showed that Pluto has a diameter of 1,473 miles, less than one-fifth the diameter of Earth, and only about two-thirds as wide as Earth's moon. Observations of Pluto's, surfaced by the New Horizons spacecraft, revealed a variety of surface features, including mountains that reach as high as 11,000 feet, comparable to the Rocky Mountains on Earth. While methane and nitrogen ice covers much of the surface of Pluto, these materials are not strong enough to support such enormous peaks. So scientists suspect that the mountains are formed on a bedrock of water ice, Another distinct feature on Pluto's surface is a large heart-shaped region, known unofficially as the Tombaugh region. This region of Pluto's surface lacks craters caused by meteorite impacts, suggesting that the area is on a geological timescale, very young, no more than 100 million years old. In 2016, scientists announced that they might have spotted clouds in Pluto's atmosphere using New Horizons data. NASA's New Horizons mission is the first probe to study Pluto, its moons, and other worlds within the Kuiper Belt up close. It was launched in January 2006 and successfully made its closest approach to Pluto on July 14, 2015. The last of the data was downloaded to Earth in 2016. The New Horizons probe carries some of the ashes of Pluto's discoverer, Clyde Tombaugh. To many citizens of Earth, the demotion of Pluto felt like a break from tradition, and several years later, many still don't quite understand all the fuss, nor why Pluto was knocked from its planetary position. But the solar system's transformation from nine planets to eight was a long time in the making and helps encapsulate one of the greatest strengths of science, the ability to alter seemingly steadfast definitions in light of new evidence. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to find out more interesting topics, and as always, thanks for watching.